Sometimes Mattel messes up. Sometimes we get formulas of WWE superstars and they don't look right. They're not accurate. And you come over to my channel and we discuss it immediately in these figure news videos. Well today, man, we're going to be breaking down some of the greatest 180s or some of the most incredible upgrades that Mattel has made to some WWE superstars. We're going to be talking about the original figures that Mattel put out of a certain superstar and how they improved them over time, maybe took a bit of criticism, flipped it on its head, and ended up creating a way better figure out of that certain superstar. This has happened multiple times over the years, but I made a list of my favorites and I made it into one video. So today we're covering the best WWE action figure upgrades by Mattel of all time. And I want to give a huge shout out to my man Figure Mags over on Instagram for giving me the inspiration behind this video because he said that he would like to see me do this video and he's the one that gave me the idea. So shout out to bro for that. But let's get into it, man. I'm not going to really start off in any order whatsoever. I'm just going to kind of name them. And you can agree or disagree down in the comment section. And if I left one out, which I'm sure I did, please let me know that down in the comment section below. But let's start things off with my man Seth Rollins, man. Back in the day, his first few elites, they were Shield elites, right? He had Shield elite figures. But then when he broke away from the Shield and became his own man, they ended up giving him a really small formula. And I know this was earlier on in the Mattel run. It wasn't super early in the run, but it was, you know, it was it was early in the run. It was definitely in the early stages of the run here for Mattel. And they gave him the small skinny legs and they gave him these super tiny arms that they used to give him. And you know, at the time, nobody really batted an eye, I don't think. I mean, there were some people that really, you know, maybe took it to heart or whatever, but it didn't really bother me at the time. It did bother me on the arms. The arms bothered me, but I never really thought about the legs until later on. And then all of a sudden, they just decided to hell with it, Brad. We're going to change his entire formula. I don't know if it was the upgrade to double jointed arms or what, but they switched his thighs to bigger thighs. His arms got bigger and really I think they could even go bigger on the arms and shoulders like some striated shoulders or something like that But that was one of the better upgrades that not really I, I don't think a lot of people were thankful enough for at the time But I'm glad they did that Another one we have to talk about is going to be Solo Sokoa. Now, Solo Sokoa, his first figure, I just think, was rushed out. But I still, I really, you know how they say they rushed figures out? I don't I don't know if I still buy that because I don't know how you would ever pick Daniel Bryan's torso for Solo Sokoa. Makes no sense to me. I don't know. I, I would have never looked at Solo and been like, oh yeah, that Daniel Bryan torso, that's the one I want to use. I would immediately go to a thicker torso for him. But they did upgrade him in Elite 107. We got him in the top picks. And I'll be honest with you, he's still not perfect. He's still far from perfect from the waist down especially and I think his arms are still too skinny but they definitely upgraded him with a better torso and that was definitely good to see. I wanted to kind of give him an honorable mention here in this video. Another one I don't think a lot of people are going to talk about is Rey Mysterio. Back in the early stages of Mattel, this was really early, like the very beginning, Elite 1, Elite 5, Elite 11, Elite 13. These Rey Mysterio figures had a smaller torso and they had the worst legs you've ever seen, man. Super tiny and I know Rey Mysterio's obviously always been small or whatever, but his legs couldn't move. He had kind of a similar thing to the new factory problem with Mattel where the leg snaps back and forth. It's always been an issue with certain guys. Mark Henry has this issue. Dusty Rhodes has this issue. There are figures over the history of Mattel that have had these issues, but Rey Mysterio used to have this issue a bunch until they switched his formula in Elite Series 15. They gave him a better torso. They put him on ball joints. Very big upgrade right there. And then they even made a better upgrade to him later on when he came back to the company and they switched him to a smaller stack and it really brought him to life when they gave him his more modern gear with the singlet and the boots and everything like that. So I think he's kind of had a, a crazy history just because he's been around so long. They've done a really good job adapting Rey Mysterio over time. And now some of his figures that come out are some of my favorites because they're so damn poseable. They feel so good in hand. Rey Mysterio is damn good. And besides that most recent top picks figure, I think it was made in the new factory and he had some issues. I still think Rey Mysterio has been a great upgrade. Another one we have to talk about here, man, it's going to be Rhea Ripley. Rhea Ripley, man. Nobody really talks about this. Her first figure in Elite 84, really strong figure. And I think at the time, nobody really, you know, it was her first Elite, whatever. And everybody was kind of pumped for it, or I was really pumped for it. Ever since I saw her debut, I was like, man, this chick, can, she, she rocks. She's a beast. But then, you know, she came out. Her Elite 84 was a great figure. I remember liking that figure a lot. And then, you know, it had been a while since we got an updated Rhea Ripley. Well, here she comes in Elite 102, I think it was, or Elite 101. I can't remember. I think it was Elite 102. And that figure, I hated. I thought it was awful. It was a weird gear, and her formula was still very small. And everybody's like, where the hell is the muscle at, Brad? Rhea Ripley is a absolute monster in the ring and her figure is so tiny well then here comes the elite 110 figure and they upgraded her her stature of the figure her musculature 
her her poses and just the way that her frame is built on this new figure with the new torso and the arms and everything. Massive upgrade to Rhea Ripley and not to mention the Elite 117 looks to be another really good Rhea Ripley. So they have really flipped around Rhea Ripley. Her figures used to not be so good and now they are some of the better women's figures you'll find on the shelf and I'm hyped for it. Can't wait for her new Elite 117. I really like the Elite 110 and then her Ultimate's coming out which also looks great so I'm looking forward to that. Thank God they actually gave her her actual build and everything like that. Great upgrade to Rhea Ripley. This next one isn't the biggest deal ever, but I want to give another honorable mention here to Austin Theory. Now, Austin Theory, I think, is another guy that could probably give more updates to in terms of the arm size and stuff. I know, you know, he's not really much to be found nowadays, I feel like, but... The new torso they gave him was great, and you know, I don't think this is a necessary change, but I think that it's one of those that actually works in this case, but again, I think they could give him bigger biceps, striated shoulders, things like that, but I really like their torso upgrade, and then the head sculpts, they've done better. His first go-around, his head was massive, it was like a damn bobblehead. His second go-around, he had those really goofy head sculpts, and then in Elite 110, they really upgraded his head sculpt. Really good beard, really good likeness, great new updated torso. They just did a really good job on theory, so I wanted to give him a little shout here in this video, but then we got to get into some of the all-time best, okay? These are going to be, I think these three are the all-time best, and I, I hope I'm not missing out on somebody. I'm sure I am, right? I'm sure I'm missing out on somebody here, but these are the all-time three, the best three upgrades of all time that Mattel has done in formula wise. We'll start off with the most recent one. It's got to be Tyler Bate. This Elite 115 Tyler Bate figure that was just revealed the other day. This figure absolutely crushes his first go around, man. His first go around, that figure was the most lifeless. It has to be one of the worst elites of all time. And I'll say, I'll stand on that. It, it was so bad, in my opinion. I thought that you know, it just was so flat. The gear was flat. The head sculpt looked like a generic John Cena with a different haircut and a mustache. It looked nothing like Tyler Bate, in my opinion. Just a terrible figure overall. And, you know, this was before Double Jointed Arms, obviously. He does it. It's just a very, a very poor figure. I cannot stand that figure in so many ways. And so him getting that update was massive. You compare it to his new Elite 115, man, it's like night and day. It's such a crazy contrast between the two that it is very impressive. I And I know you could talk about updates in technology and updates in this and that, but the just massive upgrade that it is is super wild. I mean, that that Tyler Bate upgrade has to be one of the greatest of all time. It's unbelievable the difference between his first elite to his second elite, and that just shows you that it's been such a long time since we've gotten Tyler Bate, but my God, that Elite 115 Tyler Bate is going to be one of the best elites of the year probably, just off the amount of detail it looks that's packed into the figure. It's unbelievable. Another all-timer that we have to talk about is AJ Styles. I talk about this all the time, and I don't know if it's all me or not. I don't know what the case is there, man, but it means a lot that they actually did change this one right here. I did make a post on Instagram back in the day. I mean, I guess it was, what, two years ago or something like that, two and a half, three years, something like that. I can't remember, but kind of calling out the AJ Styles formula and how bad it was. I used to hate AJ Styles figures because of how tiny he looked and how weird it made his figures and, you know, I really enjoyed AJ in the ring, and I get his figures, and I'm like, dude, I don't like this. I never liked collecting his figures, because it would be one thing if all you had to do was switch the torso, but you are you can't just switch a torso, because he has chest hair and stomach hair, and he has this, you know, one of his most iconic things about AJ Styles is his rib tattoo, which you have to get decals for, and I'm not I'm not going to buy a figure. Every elite of AJ that comes out, I got to buy the Sin Cara torso that I like. I got to crack it. I got to paint the torso. I got to add the tattoos. I got to add the chest hair. All this and that just to make a figure look the way I want. I wasn't going through that entire action figure surgery every single time. I'm not painting a damn torso to get that look, right? And then finally, they actually give him the Sin Cara torso as his base look. And on top of that, they upgraded his thighs, which made these figures so much better. It's crazy. And I know, obviously, he's even gotten more jacked now. So now his new figures that are coming out in Elite 116, that's going to be a totally new thing. And I'm sure that one's in jeans, which sucks because now we have to wait on another AJ Styles to come out in wrestling gear with the new torso and stuff. But my God, you want to talk about an all-time upgrade. This is one of my favorite things that Mattel's ever done is upgrading AJ Styles because it made his figures go from, I don't want to collect it, to holy shish, this looks epic, I can't wait to get that. And that's just crazy. But I think another all-timer has got to be one of my least favorite elites of all time, Elite 81 Angelo Dawkins. We've talked about this multiple times, man. The Elite 81 Angelo Dawkins 
was so out of pocket with the way that they made that figure. I felt like the torso, they gave him like Braun Strowman sized torso and arms. He looked like a gigantic guy. He had these baggy shorts on, which is definitely difficult to execute because I do want to say that Angelo Dawkins shorts were a little baggy back in the day when, it, you know, the Elite 81 was coming out. And I can understand it kind of the way they made it, but because it's hard plastic, it's very hard to simulate baggy pants or shorts like that, especially because you have a, a leg coming out of the shorts. You know, it's not like jeans where if you wear baggy pants, they could just sculpt baggy pants on there and it gives it that entire baggy look. When you have it cut off right up, you know, right below the knee, it's a very difficult thing to execute. I understand it, but they made his figure so so bad in Elite 81, and then to upgrade it to the Elite 103 Angelo with much better formula, much better everything. It's such an upgrade. It's one of the greatest of all time. Absolute nuts upgrade that they made for to the Elite 103 Angelo Dawkins. I had to clap it up when I saw that figure out in LA. I was mind blown seeing that upgrade and what a trip that was. That was one of my favorite highlights of that entire week. That entire week experience or weekend experience out in LA was so damn magical and something I'll never forget when you add in everything that happened in that entire weekend from you know going to WrestleMania and getting to go to the Superstore and meet all the people and everything like that. It was an un unbelievable experience and I will always retain memory of seeing the Elite 103 Angelo Dawkins in the case and seeing how big of an upgrade that was. It was mind-blowing. It was absolutely mind-blowing. You can't put it past it. That has to be, it's definitely top three all-time WWE action figure upgrades that Mattel's ever made in a change to somebody's formula. I'd put AJ Styles up there and then Tyler Bates. I mean, good God. You, you look at the comparison, man. It's not even close. It's just unreal to see the upgrades. And obviously, that's what you want out of these action figure lines, man. I know that, you know, at the end of the day, it's like, you know, it's such a, it's just such a minuscule thing to talk about, right? But when you're in the, you know, the, you know, you dive in deep into it, I think these things really do matter. And I think that it's important to talk about so that these, you know, these companies can constantly improve. You need to take pride in performance. You need to be the best that you can possibly be when you're doing your job at all times. And I think that that definitely matters, man. I mean, if you want a figure of a guy, it, like Rey Mysterio doesn't need to be the same size as Andre the Giant. It just doesn't make sense. You need to, you know, do not leave any detail unturned. You know, don't half-ass anything, whole-ass everything. And I think that that's the way it needs to be. And I think that you got to tip the cap to Mattel when they make these upgrades or they fix these things that I think deserve to be fixed or need to be fixed. And I think that it's a testament to them paying attention and wanting to better themselves instead of just pumping out the set. You know, it's like, oh, Elite 103 Angelo will just pump out the same figure and paint the paint the Braun Strowman torso with the jersey on. They actually cared enough to make the improvement. They saw the AJ Styles formula. Like, hey, man, that actually does look pretty good. Let's change it. Amazing. You got to clap it up and you got to tip the cap. Even if they don't bat a thousand, you know, sometimes the skin tone's wrong. Sometimes this is wrong. Sometimes that's wrong. But at least, you know, they have made improvements in the past. And that means that they could make improvements to the future when talking about these figures. But that is the video that I wanted to talk about today, man. WWE action figure upgrades, man. Huge shout out to Figure Mags again for the idea on this video. I greatly appreciate it, man. But that is pretty much going to wrap the video for today, man. Hope you guys did enjoy it. Love to know if I missed out on anybody. Who did I miss out on? If I missed out on any, I think another honorable mention I wanted to talk about was Xavier Woods. His upgrade of torso was fantastic. Giving him the Apollo Crews torso was great. There's probably some other ones that I'm missing, but these are just the ones that stood out to me. I'm sure I'm missing out on a massive one that I just cannot think of right off the cuff. But I spent some time, I, I sat down and tried to write it, you know, to get it all down. I wrote it down, and this, this is the list that I came up with. But that is everything I got, man, if I missed out on something. We can talk about figure downgrades, too, by God, if you want to, but... That is pretty much going to wrap the video, man. Hope you guys did enjoy. Huge shout-out to our Patreon members, man. Appreciate you, fellas. Thank you guys so very much for the support, as always. It always means the world to me. Never a day that I don't thank God for you guys. But I'm getting out, man. Hope you guys did enjoy. I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a blessed one, and I'll catch you guys later.